Okay, so I've been getting into 3D printing uh, and printing really well with the Robox printer, uh, mainly using ABS, but you know, you get the layering effect. So I've been reading up about acetone bathing or you know, acetone vapor bathing the parts to smooth them off. And I just thought it all seemed a bit of a faff, really. Uh, and then an idea popped in my head because um, I've just had a baby. I thought, why don't I use one of these? A baby steamer for sterilising bottles and stuff. That boils things in it. Uh, it's an enclosed space if you plug the holes. Uh, surely that would work, wouldn't it? Well, after playing around with it, um, yes it does. Uh, and this is how I do it, so I will show you. So this is a Tommy Tippy, but I guess it would work with any of them really. Um, so it's basically got a, a heated plate inside. Um, normally you'd pour water in here up to a certain height and then it would boil the water and steam all the parts. Uh, power button, basically it's a bit like a kettle. Uh, I guess it's got a bimetallic strip or some kind of circuit in there and it, it cuts the power to the hot plate when the temperature is a certain temperature all the fluid's boiled off. Um, so, I'll show you a little bit more about it because this one uh, as the acetone is quite thin compared to, to the water so what tends to happen is the acetone vapour boils obviously you have the lid on when you're doing it uh, and then it cools and condenses drops back down and it drops back down around here but because of this lip this rubber lip which you know possibly just unique to the Tommy Tippy you know other ones may be different um, what happens is the acetone drops back to here and doesn't run back onto the plate so then it doesn't, it doesn't boil away again um, so to get around that, we do this. There we go, so it's got a, a double or triple layer of uh, aluminium foil moulded to the inside of the Tommy Tippy. Uh, but importantly, with a hole cut out here, so that as it drops back down, it runs, and then it drops back onto the hot plate and vaporises again. Um, then, for this particular model, you install this. Uh, which is quite tricky to do uh, like this. So what I tend to do is lift the foil out, put this, this is tricky to do while holding the camera, there we go, put that in there like that, uh, and then put it inside. And there we go. Okay, so the Tommy Tippy comes with uh, some extra platforms to do various things. Uh, what wasn't installed previously when I put it in was, was this piece, this vertical piece here, and that's used to support this next platform like that. So that can sit on there like that. Now, what's really useful about this is you can use string, wire, whatever it is, to dangle your part in free space below there, and the vapor can attack it, and it's not touching any surfaces which causes problems as you can see with some of these prints here when I did it with it touching when I was experimenting the plastic oozed and bonded to here and it affects the print so you can then suspend your part from here with a piece of wire or string um, okay so here we have the part <coughs> suspended by wire this part is not actually a 3d printed part but it's just for an example and then you're pretty much ready to go. One final thing that I've found, and it's probably worthwhile doing, is wherever the area is above the part, is to put a piece of paper cloth or paper towel or, or whatever over the top, like that. And the reason for that is when you put the final lid on, um, like so, and top tip for the lid, I'm not sure if this will pick up on the camera, is there's some holes here seal those up otherwise you're going to stink of acetone vapor and it's all going to escape anyway and your part's not going to be um, vapor etched so yes the reason for the paper towel is as it basically vaporizes it'll condense on the top of here and if you're unlucky you can get the odd random spot of acetone dropping straight back on your model 
and really affecting the surface quality at that point or dripping down it and creating strange marks and effects so that stops that happening uh, and then it's basically it's a simple case of pouring in your acetone uh, and hitting go and that's it um, I tend to leave it for you know, depending on what type of part it is, if it's a big part with not much detail, you can leave it in for 10 minutes and then and take this piece out and just go and put it somewhere to dry and that's it. So really hassle-free way of uh, of doing parts and uh, finishing them with acetone. Uh, one other final tip that I found, which is uh, it's worth doing, um, it just kind of saves on your acetone usage really um, if it's a small part you're doing these side pieces um, I try and fill it in with whatever you know a whole big amount of uh, tin foil or something um, or sticking with the baby theme we have some aptamil here an aptamil box which I've cut the bottom off that can sit over there uh, you can hang your part through there Again, don't forget to put some paper towel on the top before you close the lid. Stop those nasty drips. Uh, and that kind of concentrates the vapour in, into that area uh, and just makes the, the, the process a bit smoother and, and more effective. Especially if you're doing you know, small parts, say, you know, a couple of inches by a couple of inches. Uh, or I haven't experimented with it, but like I say, you could put, put carb, well, probably not cardboard, but maybe some tins in here or, or, or something to reduce the volume inside this, this uh, Tommy Tippy so that the acetone vapour is concentrated more around the part area. Um, that's it. Uh, like the video if you think this is really useful. Um, I'd definitely recommend it, giving it a go. You might think, oh, it's expensive buying a baby, uh, baby steamer. I got this on eBay for £5 used plus postage. So ideal really. You can't really go wrong with that. So happy printing and happy acetone finishing. Let me know if you like it.